Hey, good, good morning. morning. I, you guys, you're the good coaches here, right? You guys made it. <laughs> We're in Michigan. It's a big surprise. There's snow out there. So, but this year. This year? Yeah. I've been loving it up until now, I have to admit. So, but welcome. Uh, I'm so glad that you guys came. Uh, my name is John. I'm part of a group of volunteers who help make this program available uh, in our community. <coughs> my kids did it when they were in elementary all up through high school. Uh, two of, one of them turned out to be a science major. The other two went into art, but what can you do? <laughs> but anyway, so uh, today uh, I'm going to talk a little bit just uh, to give you some tips about how to be a successful event coach. How many people here are new to Science Olympia? Okay, good. You're in the right place. Um, All right. So these are the things that we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to. I'm going to give you an overview of what's going on in the season and talk a little bit about just what's happening when kind of thing. Uh, we're going. To, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's success for your team. So. And not everybody comes to Science Olympiad with the same intentions about what they want to do. So we're going to think about that a little bit. What your jobs are, we're going to talk some more execution related stuff and where you can get uh, resources. And then we'll go back and talk about how the season plays out. And if, as you have questions uh, throughout, feel free to raise your hand. And at the end, we'll make sure that we get all the questions answered uh, if you didn't uh, along the way. So here we are in January. Your teams have already formed, and uh, you guys are here. January 18th. So the things that are going to happen between now and May, which is our main tournament on May 16th, if you haven't got that on your calendar, please reserve that day. It's a full day of activity for your families. In addition to the few competitive events that your students will be participating in, we organize a load of other great activities. When I used to be a head coach of a team uh, years ago, and the one reaction that I would always get from parents the first time that they came to a, to a tournament, it's at Macomb Community College South Campus, their reaction was, wow, I had no idea it was such a good team. Right? So it's a, it's a great fun day, a lot of things for your uh, science-related stuff for your, uh, your students to do when they're not competing. Uh, in the meantime, between now and then, things are happening to help you be successful as an event coach and for your students to, uh, to get ready. So we have workshops that happen in February. There's a schedule of those online on our website. If you haven't seen our website yet, macombso.org, uh, we, we've got packed with information of stuff that you might be interested in. So uh, we're running workshops on a number of events, nature centers in our local community, are uh, running workshops on other uh, specific events. Uh, I also want to uh, just comment that everything that you see today in presentations, you will find online on our website. So don't feel like you have to make a full record of everything that you see here. Um, uh, uh, this uh, almost identical version of this is already on our website already. And I'll be having this exact one put up within a day or so if it's not, uh, if not soon. So anyway, so. Another stopping point for you along the season is going to be practice tournament. So depending on what district you're part of uh, determines what practice tournament your school attends. And this, uh, the practice tournaments, they're, they're the exact same event, but it's, an, it's hopefully a little bit lower pressure opportunity for your students to get an idea of what it's like to compete in the Science Olympiad tournament. So if you're uh, Chippewa Valley and Lons Cruz and Utica, those three districts organize an event that's specifically for schools in that district. Utica also includes a couple private schools as part of it. If you're not in one of those three districts, you in, will be invited to the South Macomb Tournament, which happens at Frazier High School. And you see there's dates that are listed on the page there for what each of those events are, right? So. Um, it will be a mini version of the, of the main tournament. Uh, one, one difference, if you're doing the arthropod event, we don't expect you to bring your bug collection to that tournament. Please don't bring it because there won't be, we, we can't guarantee that there'll be someone with the skills able to assess it. And I'm sure you, we were, we're probably hoping to warm up a little bit so you guys can find some more bugs in. So, all right. 
Uh, late in the season, if you're on the rock doing rockets, we try to do some practice launches so you get a chance to, if, if you don't have a launcher that you have access to through your school, we try to make that available as a resource as well. So, quick start kits and supplies is something that we offer as a convenience to you that you're not required to get these. They're not available for every event, but for as many events that we can figure out what to you know, pull together resources uh, we have. Right? So this is a, uh, a convenience. We try to make it you know, economical from the standpoint that we try to charge you about what it would cost you to go get it someplace else, but then we do the work of organizing, uh, organizing all those materials. And uh, your head coach may have already placed an order for uh, kits for your team, so if you're not sure, you might you know, connect with your head coach. Um, people are already, there's, uh, there's tables a little bit farther into the school where uh, you can go and inquire if you, want to, if you want to buy one that hasn't been ordered already, or if you already placed an order, that's where you would go pick it up. Okay? All right, let's talk about what's success to your team. People have different idea about what they want to get out of Science Olympia. So uh, we want it to be fun for the students. I know uh, I had my idea of what I thought was the right model, and that's what I've got as a teacher. But your answer might be different than this, right? You're like, why are we doing it? Well, I want to be number one. Uh, I'm not sure that's a great one, because number one, being first place is hard to do, because there's a lot of other great teams that are going to show up and students who have studied. Success in Science Olympia, uh, in my experience, is directly related to uh, dedication and hard work. If you want to do well, you're going to have to put something into it. So I try to get my kids on the cycle of, we're going to work hard, we're going to do well, and then you're going to decide this is a fun activity. A fun activity. I'm not saying you have to wait to do fun until you get all the way to the end. You're looking for ways to make things fun for the kids along the way. You know, do a, find a field trip that's in the, in the area of the topic that you're studying, or having a candy break, at the, you know, maybe that's not a good idea. I don't know. You guys are probably better at this than I am. I'm not, I'm not the best at doing it, but, you know, trying to, well, all right. So, I'm trying to encourage you to apply yourself. You're going to get out of it what you put in. If you're organized as a head coach, the kids are going to take it seriously. If, you know, if practices are on time and you're ready, you're ready for them when it's, when it's time, you've all already thought about uh, if they're going to need a break, you give them a time to do that. Um, and I probably talk more than I know. All right. Your primary job as an, as an event coach is to try to make it simple for the kids, as in it's organized. The, uh, so, like, if you're the coach for the anatomy event, that's a, I'm not an anatomy person, so I always pick on this one. It's, it looks daunting to me, right? All these medical terminology or whatever. The kids can do amazing things. I'm always impressed by how, how well the kids can do. But so your job as an event coach is to help break it down. So, like, when they show up for a meeting, uh, you've, you know, there's a slice of the total scope of, of, of that event that's what you're going to be working on. Right? And you've found uh, age-appropriate materials that, 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 they can, that you as a, as a team can use, things like that. Um, so, you're, I've already mentioned this to some degree, but your job is also to demonstrate some commitment. Because if you're organized and you're prepared, the kids will realize it. If you're not, they're going to realize that too. Right? So they're going to reflect back to you how you behave. And Accountability is related to that as well, in the sense that if you ask the students to do something and then never follow up, they'll realize that when you ask for something, you didn't really mean it. So I don't, I'm not a teacher, but I imagine there's teachers in the room that sort of get this, right? They understand the, how these equations work with the kids. Okay, these are my suggestions. Uh, you, there's other answers to this as well, but from from a scheduling standpoint. The formula that I've always followed is to say, we're going to pick a time every week that's our time. So if I'm the coach for the Rock Hound event for our school, I'm, I'm probably coaching my own child. Uh, I hope that's the case, right? I got into Science Olympia because my kids wanted to be involved. It was something I got to do with my kids. And so I'd be coaching my own child, and then I'm paired with another child from the team. And so you've got to find a time that works for the two of you. And 
So, uh, and agree on, so let's say every Tuesday night at six o'clock, that's our time. If, if, you, if you agree on that, then you can start managing the exceptions as opposed to every week trying to find a time, well, when are we gonna meet? And it changes every week. Well, what you'll find is you'll spend so much time in logistics and the season will disappear, it will get away from you because you won't have set that regular expectation for that regular meeting. How long you meet, that I think is a function of the age and the temperament of the children that you're working with. So for some students, uh, 90 minutes isn't a big deal, but for some it might be, 60, maybe 60 is the limit on that, right? So you have to play that by ear. I, I know I find that by the time that the, the logistics of meeting happen, 60 minutes starts to get eaten away by the, all the stuff around it. And I find that I don't have enough time to get done what I wanted to get done with the, with the students. So that's why I, I personally lean toward 90 minutes, but I think age matters. Nowadays, I'm only coaching high school age kids. They have a little bit longer attention span, some of them, than the elementary kids. So, all right, so I've already talked about uh, some of these things uh, on the previous page. So you guys probably have better ideas than I do about how to make it fun and how to make it engaging for the kids. Um, so I'll leave that up to you. Okay, finding resources. First of all, please read the rules. And then after you spend some time working on the event, a month from now, read the rules again. Because you will forget your, 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 what you remember that were in the rules will, will migrate. You'll, you'll, you'll spend time, you'll, go, you'll understand your event better a month from now, and your mind will start to create things that you think are appropriate for the rules, but may not be the case. So go back and read. Don't be surprised when you get to the tournament uh, that there's something you didn't understand. Uh, we have a load of resources online. If you haven't found our website yet, macomeso.org, you need to go there. For every event, there's a, there's a page on our website which has resources that are targeted to you as an event coach. Uh, and depending, they're, they're different depending on what the event is. Our event supervisors, that's the, that's the title that we give the, the um, expert who's running a particular event. So for anatomy, we have a professor from a home community college. For uh, charged up, we've got an electrical engineer. You know, these, are, these are the people who are writing the tests, organizing the event on the day of the tournament. They're responsible for the execution of the particular topic that your student is participating in. Uh, anyways, so and they have provided many resources on our website for you. Uh, we have workshops. Again, there's a list explicitly uh, on our website. On our, there's an FAQ. So today you're going to get a chance to, uh, after this session, you're going to get a chance to go and hear from the event supervisors what's going on. You maybe have a question to ask. Maybe, you know, two days from now when you get home, you think, oh, I should have asked that question and I didn't do it. We have an online system where you can come on and you can put in your question. The event supervisor will see it and reply. And then we post your question and answer on the website where you can find it. We'll tell you we did that. But then where everybody else can find it as well because we want you all to have the same information. Okay, so even if you don't have a question, you might go check out the FAQ system because you're gonna find out somebody else thought of a good question to ask that you didn't think of, right? Uh, we have, uh, I've already mentioned the quick start kits, so we've got a lot of things. So if you're on a team and you're, you're the brand new coach for a particular event, let's say you're the, you're the arthropod event, and you have, do you know who was the event coach last year for, for your event? If not, I think one of the, your, the questions you're going to be asking your head coach is, can you tell me who that is? Can you give me the contact information for the person who coached it before me? Because they learned something that you would prefer not to learn on your own, right? That's how teams get stronger. That's how teams get better, is by learning and, and holding some of that information. I encourage event, uh, event coaches to you know, have a notebook or keep your information in some organized fashion. If, if you didn't already get a notebook from your team that says, here's relevant information about your event, be thinking about creating that resource for your team so that you can, you know, what would you like to have received? You want to be handing that off to the next person 
and to try to build the continuity and, and the strength of, of the team at your school. Okay? Uh, the internet's great. So and there's, there's a lot of things out there. You want to make sure that whatever you get into um, actually matches the rules. If you find things, water rockets is an example of that. There's a lot of kids out there who haven't grown up and they're you know older, as old as me, and they're still launching rockets and they're still publishing things on the internet, which you can learn from, but not all of it matches the science Olympiad rules. So you want to be careful for things like that. Uh, all right, I've already talked about what's on the bottom there. Act like you own the event. So here's some examples of the kinds of resources you can find. And I, well, I want to put a disclaimer on this. I built this list five, six years ago. I don't know, a long time ago. Right? So there's better stuff on the internet probably than what I have here. But these are just some examples of the kinds of, of, of uh, resources that you can find online that will help you out. There's, and don't take my advice over the, what the event supervisors have said, because I'm not the experts on any of these topics. Right. But so there's, there's a load of uh, arthropod bugs, bug uh, things, and we've also got, you'll notice if you go to our website, we've got a study guide that's there, there's workshops at the Nature Center, there's training videos that our supervisor has posted online to, to teach you how to do, you know, how to pin a bug. Who's done that before? Right? Usually we're just trying to smock, smash it. Bug people don't want to hear that. Uh, for Charged Up, there's, a, there's some really cool online resources. Every year new things show up. People, you know, there's training kinds of things out there. I'm sure I don't know all, all the good ones. And I already mentioned, well, you got to watch out for those raw, water rocket guys. Okay, let's talk about uh, the stages of the season. So. When I was coaching early with, uh, well, yeah, even to some degree, I'm still doing it now with the older kids. Early on, I would try to, I would have the kids do things in, in parallel. Like, so, you know, after we worked on studying a particular topic or whatever, if I gave them a, a practice quiz or something like that so that I get some idea of how well they're doing, early in the season, I would have them do it side by side, right? Because I want to know how well individually how they're doing. But then as we get closer to competition, I have to switch gears and think, oh, well, if they need to behave as a team when they get into the tournament. They have to be effective. The, the individual events that we've created, we've created them at a level of difficulty so that it's challenging for your students. And, and so for instance, the astronomy test, you know, the kids sit down, this is a test where they sit down and they take it, they're sitting side by side. If they don't divide up the test, and half of one of them work on half and the other one work on half, they're going to have the challenge getting it all done because there's a lot of stuff to do. Right? And so you need, your, you need a plan for how your event team is going to cooperate and what their roles are. You can include the students in terms of trying to decide what that is, but you as an event coach should be keeping your eye on what are the strengths and weaknesses of the, of the two students that you get to work with and how can you make them an effective team and have them practice being an effective team. If, if there's a zip grade for them, that's one of these you know, fill in the bubble things for, uh, for your event. That's about half of our events have those. One of the students has, has to hold that and be the one filling in the bubble. So who's got that job? That's a really, it seems like a simple thing, but if you haven't figured that out in advance, the students are going to struggle when they get into the room and they don't know who's got that job. Right? And the, the worst thing that can happen during a competition is for two students on a team to be fighting. If you see that happening, you know it's not going to go well, right? Because they're using up valuable time and they're not being productive as, as, a, as an event team. Um, okay. I think this is all I've got in here. So I'm interested in answering your questions. Um, who's got a question? Yes. Um, on the website, it says the year determinant is the 24th, but your presentation says it's the 23rd. Which is right. It's a Tuesday. It's Tuesday, so it's the 24th. 24th. So, yeah. So, thank you. That might be an update. That might be the uh, date from last year. Did this say the 23rd? Yeah. Which, what did this one say? The 23rd? Okay. Yes, I apologize. Utica. So, for the practice tournaments, the, the uh, South Macomb, which is a, a lot of districts, 
Chippewa Valley, Lodge Cruise, those are all Saturday events. And they very much have the structure of a tournament. Uh, the Utica practice event is a little bit different animal. It happens on a Tuesday evening at, at Mallow Junior High. And um, it's, there are no awards given. Um, the students do get to come, you know, come into an event room and, and go through the process of what it would be like at a tournament, you know, the, the testing or, or demonstration portion. But, but it's, it's a little more casual. Um, and, you, and it is a Tuesday night. Tuesday evening. Okay, other questions? Good catch. So you guys, after, after today, today you're going to hear from event supervisors. You're going to be able to add, they're, they're going to tell you about their event. Maybe they'll go over some rules. I hope they give you some advice about how to be an effective coach, specifically for their event. They'll point out resources that they have made available to you, I hope. Um, and then, you're going to get started practicing as uh, for the season. Keep an eye on our website for <coughs> look for workshops. Uh, if you've got questions, we want to answer them. Our, our, our motivation is to make you successful. Other questions? Thank you. The tournament is on the 16th. Is that for all grade levels of all ages? That's for everybody. Uh, we don't we don't make a distinction about grade levels aside from the fact that uh, we're, we're serving grades three through six. We ask teams to not field students younger than third grade just because uh, there's a lot of really bright second graders, but emotionally it's a little bit. I think it's not a good match because it, it, the tournaments are really high pressure, especially for parents, and we don't want the second graders to see you in that moment where you can't handle the pressure. Um, we, and when you get to the tournament, you're going to find that there's two divisions. There's a K-5 division and a K-6 division, and that's a function of what school you attend, which division your school is in. You, you know, you know uh, you, your, your elementary school either stops at fifth grade or it stops at sixth grade. And so your school, if you're in a K, if you're at Chippewa Valley, you're a K-5, and you're competing against all the other schools that are K-5. If you're uh, at uh, in Utica. That's a big uh, K-6 dis district, and you're competing against all the other K-6 schools, including Frazier and, and some other ones, too. Um, so there's those two basic divisions. We give out award, we give out medals. Your students are competing uh, to win a, a place medal uh, in their event. Uh, we give out about 25%. About so if, if uh, I think I'm going to do math at this point in the morning. Anyways. So there's about 40 teams, 35 to 40 teams in each division, and um, we would give place up to either ninth or 10th place, depending on whether you're in K-5 or K-6. In addition, there are team level awards, um, which is based on the accumulated scores of, across all the event teams. Uh, if you're at a school that is either like a rookie team or you're at a school that isn't fielding a full team, I wouldn't get distracted by the, the team level awards. It's not really that important for you. Uh, don't let your team worry about that. They still have an opportunity to, to focus on how well they're doing, do, are they doing their best, and they'll, be, they'll get a chance to compete for the medal for themselves. All of your students will receive a cool looking participation medal. Uh, as well at the tournament. That's on May 16th. Uh, the individual practice tournaments have some awards and things and their own policies. I'm not the tournament director for uh, the Chippewa Valley Tournament, the Lawrence Cruz Tournament, or any of them uh, directly. So it's, the policies can be a little bit different. If you, some, some teams have more than the 16 students that are allowed on a, on a team. And we, those students are called alternates, and so there's slightly different policies that go around along with those students. Uh, so if you have questions about that, one we have stuff written on our website that go through the details of how that, how that uh, is managed and what their opportunities are. In all cases, we want the students to come on May 16th and participate, even if they don't get the opportunity to in, in a, even if they don't get the opportunity to be in one of the competitive events representing your school. So it's still a great day for, for any of the students. Other questions? Yes, sir. So are these 16 events repeating yearly at the same events on a yearly basis? 
Uh, they've been, the, the titles of the events have been relatively stable in recent years. So um, we designed some of the events so that they rotate a little bit. So for instance, wildlife safari is, is maybe the best example of this. This year it's fish. Next year it might be birds. The year after it might be mammals. You know, so it, that, that event turns over very much. Anatomy, we've gotten it onto a, um, is another example of another type where like about half of the content changes every year. So this year it might be bones and respiratory. And next year we hang on to bones and and switch to digestive or something, right? So we're, so we're, we're trying, we, we're, we really like the events that we have. And so in fact, when uh, we put code, the, the computer science event in as a full event, we really struggled with what to do. And for those of you who love reflection relay, it is going to come back. So I love that event. It's just not in the, in the roster this year. But so the individual events themselves change a little bit from year to year. So we're trying to get, we're trying to have the content be fresh and not just turn things over. Did that answer your question? Other questions? Yes? What's the, what's the parents' role on the day of the tournament? Have fun. So, so I, if I could control exactly what you did as a parent throughout the season, I'd say work hard, go, you know, work hard with your kids, do a great job. When you get to the day of the tournament, I think you're a cheerleader, right? So you're you're responsible for getting your kids to where they need to be. It's really critical that they, you know, show up five minutes before their session at a particular room. The rooms are scattered across the McCollum Community College's campus. So it, it's not a it's not a big campus, but it's not a small one either. Um, and so you know, getting them there on time, helping them not be stressed out. That's why I'm saying be a cheerleader. So don't. When I see parents grilling the kids in the hallway before they go into the room, I just think, oh no, you know, that, this is the moment where you ought to be saying, hey, great job, you're doing good. Um, have fun, right? Because in the end, we, we want these students to come out of this experience saying, hey, well, science is interesting and science can be fun, I'm, you know, and I can be good at it. And we want them to have a fun time, right? Because in 15 years, we want to see them going to college and studying, you know, civil engineering or something, who knows what, right? Computer science. And so we want them to have fun now uh, as part of science. Does that answer your question? So we want you to have fun too. Other questions? Sir? Give a little information on the open events, I mean, especially for kids that might be older and it's going to be tournament. Sure. Uh, the, the question is about what open events. We, we, we have competitive events at the tournament on May 16th. We also have what we call open events. And these are activities that the students can do that are science related. So one of the ones that I'm really happy about is for the last couple of years, we formed a partnership with the Michigan Science Center and they bring a team of people to the tournament and have different stations of different kinds of sciencey stuff, you know. And I'm like, now that you're asking me specifically to say something about one of them, I can't remember. But, you know, exploring different properties and materials and you know, cool things like that. And they come up with a simple little experiment that the kids can walk up to the table and they'll get some, some instruction and there'll be something they can do or something they can watch. Uh, we also, uh, last year we didn't have it, but I've already heard that we're going to get back. We had Microsoft come in and have a whole display of computers and things like that, activities for the kids to do. The Reptarium came for the first time this last year. They're a, uh, like a little, uh, a little reptile an amphibian zoo that is in Utica. I didn't know about it until just this last year, but they were very popular. And they show up with 10 foot long snakes and other really cool stuff. Um, and uh, we have a group that brings pigeons every year. There's, there's a wide variety of things, other science related things that we try to bring in um, to the campus and things that, for your students to do. At the, end of the, at the end of the day, we put out a survey and say, hey, what did you like? What did you do? And I'm, a lot of people say, hey, I didn't get a chance to look at all this stuff. You know, I'll give you my feedback, but I didn't have time in my day to look at all the different things that you guys had available. So I, I feel confident that you won't run out of things to do. Did that answer your question? Yes. I know you said that the campus was construction. Oh, gosh. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so. Is it going to be close to 
So the, the question is about the fact uh, there's, there's construction going on in the Macomb Community College campus this year. And the second most important building on campus is being taken off the map for us. So the K, for those of you, you guys aren't returning, but anyway, the K building is under construction. You're returning, right? yes. Um, and we had several events in that, in that building. We had team room, team tables in that building. And so we're adjusting, trying to find different solutions for all that. So uh, the astronomy event is going to be put into a different building, and it's going to be separated into two rooms. We're going to have two parallel supervisors for that. The charged up event is moving to a, and Zowie estimation have to move to different buildings. Uh, so they won't be in the traditional locations for this year because we, we, the building is going to be totally under construction. Um, we had some open events in that building too. We have got to find places for it all. Other questions? Well, I hope you have a great time today. Get what you need. Thank you very much for coming. Be safe on the road.